You know, one thing I really, really like about cells is that they are pretty smart. They know their families and actually want to hang out together with them. And like all families have names, cell families have names too, called tissues. Now, depending on which part of the animal body or plant that the families live, they have special names like connective tissue, epithelial tissue, metastomatic tissue, and so on. We'll get to them soon enough. And don't worry, we'll learn it in such a simple way that you will get a hang of all those names. Now, the broadest classification of tissues happen based on whether it's a plant that we're talking about here or an animal, because it happens that only they have them. Although completely different types with very different structures and very, very different functions. You may ask me, why the difference? Why can't they be the same? But you know for a fact that one, plants and us look really, really different, right? I mean, there's absolutely no resemblance between us and a tree, zero resemblance. And two, plants cannot exactly do the myriad functions that we do, like walk, talk, run, jump, dance, skip, eat, drink, party hard, study or sleep. But plants are capable of a very, very cool thing. They can just pluck carbon dioxide, sunlight, and water from the atmosphere and make their own food. And that's not all. They just reject the oxygen that comes as a byproduct of this super amazing food making process and give it to us and all the other animals to breathe and be alive. So because of the major differences that exist on the whole, the differences have to reflect at the cellular level. And these like minded cells bundle up together they form special tissues for plants called plant tissues and special tissues for animals called animal tissues. And that is what we're going to actually learn about here in a very, very different way. Parenchyma made up of parenchyma cells, the most abundant cell type found in all major parts in higher plants. When they're first made, they're spherical in shape and then they get packed up nicely side by side. And because of their thin walls, they go on and get flattened at the points of contact. The vacuoles are large and can contain some secretions like starch, oils and some crystals. Now, there are some hybrid varieties of parenchyma cells depending on where they are found and they have some obvious names too. Pop a chloroplast into them, not only will it give a nice green color to the cell, but even more importantly, the cell can now carry out the process, the wonderful process of photosynthesis. What are these cells called? Chlorin, chyma. Now, if the parenchyma cells don't have chloroplasts, they won't be green, obviously, and they won't aid in photosynthesis too, but they help in the storage of food and water. When parenchyma cells are loosely packed together with some air spaces, it's got a nice name, Aaron Chyma. 